Luminar AI or Luminar Neo? Which is better? Which is right for you? Which do I prefer? That's the topic of this video today. Now you guys know me, it's not just gonna be me chinwagging, of course I'm gonna do a photo edit as well. I recently took a series of photos for a fashion competition entry of a beautiful lady, and it's one of those photos I'm going to edit today, and that will highlight a couple of tools, couple of reasons as to why I prefer one version of Luminar over another. Right, let's get into it. In front of me here we have the photo straight out of camera, and I'm gonna start at the beginning working on this one, and I'm gonna jump into the edit section. Scroll up to the top and as always we start with develop raw. I'm going to apply a camera matching profile and I think I'm going to go for camera neutral. And the camera matching profile is just going to help to better render those colours more accurately. From here I'm just going to make a couple of adjustments just to make sure that my highlights are controlled. Make sure we've got a bit of detail in the shadows. Make sure I'm happy with the black and white points add ourselves in a little bit of contrast there with an S curve and as it's a beautiful sunny day what I'd like to do is just warm up the temperature slightly just to give it the nice warm feeling now obviously when you're playing with the temperature you can cool things down warm things up but there's a little sweet spot in there you have what I consider to be an accurate color balance and then when you start to warm things up you can just introduce that subtle shift either one way or the other which just gives that sense of warmth or cooling the image down without going to the extremes of taking things into the land of orange or the land of blue and so I'm just going to settle with mine just slightly on that warmer side. I'm happy with the tint, saturation I don't really need to do too much with but I think I'll just grab the vibrant slider and move that up slightly just to really enhance the lovely colours in the blue and gold that we have in what she's wearing. I always like to introduce a bit of sharpening into my image and just from experience I know that that's a pretty good setting for my camera and I'm going to turn on auto distortion corrections and as you can see that just popped the image and what that's doing is correcting for in this case a slight pin cushioning that I have in this particular lens at this particular focal point so if I turn it off we see our before and our after now well effectively this is geometrically correct I actually prefer it before with the correction on it's just widening our model slightly and with it off she's just slightly slender so I'm just actually going to leave that as it is Let's jump into Enhance AI and grab the Accent AI slider. And as you guys know, follow my channel, I always like to just play with this and see what it's doing. But if you'll notice in the background, it's really enhancing all of this detail that originally was getting lost. And whereas oftentimes that's great, if you're losing detail somewhere, this Accent AI can just help to bring that back. But for this photo, I don't want to do that because I want our attention to actually be on our model, not on the background. So I'm going to leave that alone for this one. Structure AI is another tool that is so high up on my priority list I may not actually end up using it but I'll always grab this slider and just see what it's actually doing and sometimes it's a case of not looking at the photo overall and thinking okay I'm going to apply this at 50% all over it but a case of looking at certain areas and going okay am I preferring where we're actually enhancing the structure. And as I mentioned before I don't want to bring attention to the background so in this case what I may do is just paint this over the top of our model. I can be pretty rough and ready with this, that's fine. I'm currently painting with 71% of the effect, so when I let go, she's just had a slight amount of Structure AI applied to her dress. Currently there's nothing that I've done inside of Luminar Neo that we could not achieve inside of Luminar AI. So where do the differences lie and why do I prefer one over the other? Well, I'm gonna jump into a new tool inside of Luminar Neo, Relight AI, and I'm gonna play around with this tool which is exclusive to Luminar Neo to try and solve a particular problem that I think this photo has. And that is, it was one of the first photos that I took on the day. I don't think I was quite in my groove at this point and I did something that I would not normally do and the reason for that is if we look at the bright area of the hat and the bright area of our model's face here it's actually competing with a luminance value which is very similar of this pillar behind and normally I would have actually just shifted my position ever so slightly so that the framing of this bit of the hat and her face was actually against the darker background either this side or this side so shame on me as the photographer but look this is why we have post-production when we perhaps didn't quite nail it in camera and so what I'm wanting to do is actually help bring attention to our model just help her pop out from the background and Relight AI is actually a really good tool for doing that. So the main tools are normally just brightness near, brightness far, and then the depth to control that. But we also have the ability to warm up and cool down the background as well. And so let's have a play around and just see what we can do. 
So just as a starting point, I'm gonna grab the brightness near and start to move that up so that our model is getting more exposure on her, i.e. she's getting brighter. But now let's see if we can bring the brightness of the items that are further away down. And so I'm gonna grab the brightness far slider and bring that down. And we can compensate that by bringing the brightness near slider up again. And currently I've gone way over the top. I'm not worried about that at the moment. Now this is really clever. I can grab the depth slider and move that brightness point or the transition between what the software considers to be the near point and the far point. And I can actually move that through the scene in a way that the software is actually recognizing three dimensional space in our two dimensional photo and creating a depth map based on that, which I think is just insanely clever. Now I've got to be honest, this tool isn't perfect. You can see we've got some pretty Pretty nasty haloing going on around here but I believe that over time the algorithm that runs this is going to be refined by the team and we're going to see a big improvement on this but it's still a usable tool and I'll show you how we can refine it in just a little bit. But let me show you one more thing, warmth near. This is gonna give us the ability to actually warm up the foreground, for example, and again, I'm gonna be way over the top with this just so you can see what's going on, and I can cool down the background. And that's another really useful way of creating separation between our foreground and our background. But like I said, this is way over the top at the moment what I've done. So I'm just gonna bring back these sliders just so it's not as aggressive. That's gonna reduce the haloing effect that we've got going on around her hat and her shoulder here and then what I'm going to do is actually create a mask and I'm just going to paint this effect in only where I want it so let's toggle our before and toggle our after and that allows you to see how we've actually darkened down that background pillar and that's just given a bit more separation and allowing us as the viewer to see the model with more relief from the background which is great I feel like I may have gone a little bit overboard with the uh, warmth sliders as well so I'll just dial those back but now I'm going to come in and grab a mask and I'll choose about a third strength. So we're on 33 at the moment because I like to build my masks up in layered passes. So now I'm just gonna come in, click and start painting this in. So that's gonna darken down the background there. We're gonna darken down this pillar as well. And I don't need to go around the back here where we were actually experiencing that haloing. And so by painting it in with a mask, we can actually be a little bit more precise. And if we were experiencing haloing, then we don't need to actually introduce that into our final photo. And then I'm just going to paint over the top of our model, but I'm just gonna to stay to the center of her body. And I'm gonna stay away from the edges, and that way I'm not gonna be introducing that unwanted halo effect. But I'm still gonna be able to brighten up her body. So that's much better. Let's have a look at our before and our after. Before and after, and as I say, this is available in Luminar Neo, not in Luminar AI. So while this tool isn't perfect, for me it kind of sums up Skylum and their approach to photo editing. I've been using photo editors since back in the early 90s on my Commodore Amiga and in all that time I've never seen tools introduced as innovative as this. So like I say, while it's not perfect, it still excites me having the ability to use this and I know that this tool is going to get refined over time. But of course this one tool is not the only reason why I actually prefer Luminar Neo to Luminar AI. So what else is it about Luminar Neo that makes me prefer it to Luminar Luminar AI. Well, I've touched on this in previous videos, and it's all to do with the ability to apply tools multiple times. And you'd be forgiven for thinking, eh, what's the big deal about that? Well, it's actually really significant, and it actually solves a lot of problems that we have as photo editors, and also gives us a lot of creative solutions. So in the remainder of this video, I'm gonna give you a couple of examples as to how this feature can actually really benefit us. So let's get back into Luminar and take a look. So let's close Relight AI down, and let's have a little look where we came from and where we've got to. And I'm about to show you those couple of features that I really like, and I've just glanced over to the left and realized layers. I haven't even mentioned layers. That's another benefit of Luminar Neo over Luminar AI. But I shan't digress into that. I'm gonna stick with showing you a couple of benefits of being able to reapply tools. And so one of the problems that I have with this photo that I would like to fix is the fact that it's very bright in the background, and I'm finding this like archway here in the top right very distracting. These little spots of light down here also very distracting. I don't want to remove them, I just want to reduce their visual impact in the photo. And so we've already done a develop tool, but I'm going to come in and use it again, and this time I'm going to use it to reduce the exposure. I might grab the highlights and bring those down as well. Bring the shadows up slightly, not so we're completely crushing everything down to black. Toggle our before and our after, and of course I'm not after this effect over the whole photo, and that's where our mask is going to come in. So I'm gonna grab a mask, I'm gonna grab a paintbrush, 
and we'll just crank this a little bit higher just so we can get this done quickly. I click once and I paint over the bright part there, bring my mouse down, paint over that bottom bit. We'll make the brush a bit smaller and I'm also gonna use that just through here as well, just to darken this bit down. I'm also not really in love with the yellowing effect we've got going on just up here in the stonework. And so we can utilize other aspects of this tool as well. I could come down to the saturation section, bring that all the way down, and all of a sudden we've turned that area where I've painted it almost black and white. I'm not gonna go as heavy handed as that. I just wanted to show you the effect in action. And I'm just gonna sort of tease that in around minus 33. Let's have a look at our before and after, and that's a reapplication of the tool that we just can't do inside of Luminar AI, but we can inside of Neo. Guys, if you don't have Luminar Neo yet and you think it'd be a good fit for you as a photo editor, I've got a link in the description below with a discount code at Sky10, and you're welcome to use that. And when you buy Luminar Neo that way, three good things happen. The first is you get to save yourself some money. The second is I get a small commission from Skylum because you've used my link, so that's much appreciated. And the third thing is Skylum are actually donating money from any purchase at the moment to humanitarian aid helping in Ukraine. So the win, win, win. <laughs> right, let's get back to the photo. You know, we could take it a step further, close the tool down, add another version of it. And this time we could increase the exposure, bring the shadows up, maybe not that much, grab another brush, nice big fat paintbrush, bring our strength down to maybe 21. And I'm just painting in the top left corner. And all I'm going to try and do here is just emulate the fact that we've got some light coming in from the left hand direction. I don't want to overexpose her face there. So I might just jump back into the erase tool and just make sure that I'm not applying that effect over her face. And look at our before and after applying that. If you're somebody who's questioned, where's the dodge and burn tool gone inside of Luminar Neo? Hopefully this demonstration has shown to you and made you realize light bulb moment, well, I don't actually need the dodge and burn tool. Effectively, what does dodge and burn do? It's for either brightening or darkening specific areas of your image based on where you're brushing in. We can actually control that brightness and the darkness within our photo in a much more controlled way because not only do we have access to brightening things up with the exposure slider, we can be more precise as you saw by using the highlights, the shadows, and saturation and any other tool that exists within that developed tool. So if you said to me, I will trade you one dodge and burn tool for the ability to reapply the developed tool, I'd be like, on your bike, pal, you must be crazy. I'm sticking with what I've got, thanks. So that's one example of multiple uses of the same tool. Let's look at another one. So we're gonna close the develop tool down and this time we're gonna use structure AI. And if we jump into the edit section here, you will recall that we have already applied some structure just over our model, just to bring out some little details, just to help that along. But in this case, what I'm going to do is actually use structure AI in a negative capacity. And if I toggle our before and our after, you'll see what we're doing. We're kind of blurring the image. We're giving it a softened look. And I'm gonna grab the boost slider because I'm gonna go extreme with this just for the sake of the video so you guys can really get a sense of what this is doing. So before and after. But of course, we're not crazy. We're not gonna apply it to the whole image. We're just going to specifically paint it into areas. And so I'm gonna grab my masking tool, grab my brush again, make sure that the strength is somewhere I want it. Let's go for about a third again increase the size with my right bracket key. And now I'm just gonna paint this effect in the background. And what that's gonna do is just give the effect that that's slightly more out of focus. And we can come around here and we can just put a little bit of that over this front pillar as well, just so our viewer's attention goes less to the background and more where we want it over our model. So let's have a look at our before and our after of that effect, before and after. So just look at that background before and after, and then it's all softened up. So what's my conclusion on which is better, Luminar AI or Luminar Neo? Well, you'd think I'm gonna say Luminar Neo, that's been what I've been getting at through the whole video, right? Well, not exactly, it's more that Luminar Neo is right for me. I've been photo editing for a long time, and so when I look at an image, I have an idea in my mind already what I want to achieve, and so the more tools I have available to me to allow me to achieve that vision, the happier I am as an editor. However, if I was just starting out with photo editing, I would not be able to look past the simplicity and usability of Luminar AI. For new photographers, people just starting their photo editing journey, I would strongly recommend Luminar AI. And 
sometimes people ask me, should I get both programs? Well, you don't need both, it's entirely up to you, but the benefit of getting both is, oftentimes they'll package those two together, so you're saving money by buying both. Luminar AI, great for beginners, has been in production for a couple of years now, and so it's a really robust piece of software now. Luminar Neo, with its layers, tool reapplication, and many other features, really unlocks the ability for creativity, which I really, really love. So which you decide to go for, it's entirely up to you. If you want to get both, get both. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Luminar Neo is going to be continually developed and we're going to see more and more tools drop into that. So I hope this has helped you if you've been looking at which to get. I also help, I hope this, end of the video. When I start tripping over my words, it's the end of the video. So get out of here. Be gone. Get out of, click another video. There should be another one around my head right now. So um, we'll put it there. Go and click that, click that, click that. See in that video. Gone crazy. Oh. Maybe too much coffee today. <laughs> <laughs>